Well, Clay Travis lit up the left today. All it took was one tweet. It says, if you're a Trump supporter in New York City, who's a part of the jury pool, do everything you can to get seated on the jury and then refuse to convict as a matter of principle, dooming the case via hung jury. It's the most patriotic thing you could possibly do. And Clay joins us now. Clay, you aren't suggesting that there's a stealth juror that maybe is dishonest during jury selection and totally boots this trial on purpose. Would you be suggesting something like that? Jesse, you know me. There are few people on the planet with higher standards of just decorum. And as you can well see by the way I am dressed, few people who are just more beloved in the entire legal profession than me. So <laughs> Jesse, of course I would say, legally, I want everyone to behave in the absolute perfect fashion. This is Michael Popog with a Legal AF Hot Take. Now, MAGA legal commentators are just saying out loud that New Yorkers should commit felonies in order to help Donald Trump win his criminal trial. Right. Clay Travis, who is on a show called Outkick, who took over for Rush Limbaugh at some point and says he's some sort of lawyer that practiced in the Virgin Islands, um, has now made himself into some sort of insta legal commentator, and he is in his own social media. And we'll put a, we'll put it up on the screen here. Has just said that to do their patriotic duty, people in New York should work to get onto the jury by lying about their ability to be fair and impartial, to get as many Trump MAGA people on as possible. And, in, and when once they're there, no matter what the evidence and no matter what the facts that are presented, they should vote to acquit and hang the jury. That's Clay Travis. I'm going to play a clip from Clay Travis in a moment so you can see who I'm talking about. But let me just break it down first. The first request that he's making, yes, is a federal crime, even though this is a state prosecution. There is a specific statute, 18, 18 U.S.C. 1623, particularly, that I'm going to read for you, that Travis is actually encouraging people to violate. The statute says that whoever under oath, which is what you take when you're you know, being a prospective juror, in any proceeding before any court of the United States, which includes the New York Criminal Court, knowingly makes any false material declaration or makes or uses any other information, knowing the same to contain any false material declaration, shall be fined or imprisoned. So when you are telling the court and the other lawyers during voir dire, the jury selection process, that you can be fair and impartial when you're just trying to be a runaway juror who gets on, not going to put his hands or over their eyes and ears. It doesn't matter what happens in the courtroom, doesn't matter what the evidence is, doesn't matter, matter what the facts are, you're going to vote to acquit Donald Trump. That is a felony. <laughs> and the um, the the comeback for that, you'll see Clay Travis's comeback for that, is that he said, no, no, I'm not asking uh, for people to commit a felony. I'm asking them to do jury nullification. And therefore, that's not a felony. I mean, I don't know what law school, well, actually, I do know what law school he went to. He went to Vanderbilt and then practiced in the Virgin Islands. This is a guy, just so before I tell you why he's wrong again, on, and I'll explain what jury nullification is. And I'm not making this up. I, don't, I never make up things ever on Legal AF or really anywhere in my life. I don't blow smoke or sunshine. Clay Travis once went on a pudding strike because he couldn't get NFL Sunday ticket in the Virgin Islands when he lived and worked there. And he, which, meant, which means he ate nothing but pudding for 50 days in order to get Direct TV to give him the NFL Sunday package. That apparently is his main legal credential to tell you and me that New Yorkers, where he doesn't live, should commit felonies and willingly participate in unlawful jury nullification in order to do their patriotic duty to help Donald Trump. This episode of Legal AF is brought to you by Manicora Honey, also known as the honey with superpowers. Let me share something sweet with you. And I mean really sweet. 
It's something that's become a staple in my routine, and I think you're gonna love it. I'm talking about Manakura honey. When I say honey, you might be picturing those bear-shaped bottles at the supermarket. But that's not what this is. Manakura honey is single origin, rich, creamy, and the most delicious honey you've ever had. It's supercharged with unique antioxidants and prebiotics and has three times more than your average honey. Manakura honey supports immunity, aids digestion, boosts energy, and helps balance inflammation. It's a game changer, and all you need is one to three teaspoons a day. On top of that, Manakura honey has a natural antibacterial compound called MGO, only found in Manuka honey. So if you're looking for something simple and delicious to add to your wellness routine, we found your new healthy habit. Now it's easier than ever to try Manakura honey with the starter kit. Just head to manakura.com slash legal AF to get $25 off. The starter kit comes with an MGO 850 plus Manuka honey, five honey travel sticks, a wooden spoon, plus a guidebook. Now I love the jar and squeeze bottle but the extra pack of compostable honey sticks is perfect for whenever you're on the go. You can bring them with you when you're traveling or need a quick snack running errands. And they are the perfect energy boost if you're out for a run or at the gym. That's M-A-N-U-K-O-R-A dot com slash legal AF to get $25 off your starter kit. This is the ultimate honey indulge and try some honey with superpowers from Manakura. Manakura is incredible, and I'm so thankful they're a partner of the show. I look forward to Manakura every morning. Make sure you click the link in our description or head to manakura.com slash legal AF and try some today. Jury nullification, we'll do a little Patreon breakout session here, is a concept in which the jury, because they like the person, they want to help the person, the defendant, They ignore all evidence, they ignore the law, they ignore the instructions of the judge, and they just make up their mind that they're gonna acquit the defendant. And that's called jury nullification. Lawyers sometimes illegally, subject to reversible error, try to invite jury nullification. They tell the jury at some point, either directly or indirectly in their closing argument or their opening statement that, you know, some implicit instruction. Don't worry what the law and the facts are. If you if you just feel that my guy's getting railroaded or he's subject to uh, selective prosecution in the case of Donald Trump, acquit, vote to acquit. That is a exhortation towards jury, jury nullification. And it is unlawful in New York under a long line of court of appeals decisions to encourage jury nullification. We don't want juries once sworn to deliberate fair and impartially to ignore the facts and the legal instructions by the judge and just come up with their own result, right? And that is exactly what Clay Travis, a leading MAGA commentator, who used to be a Democrat, is asking for. Just to give you a little taste of Clay Travis, here's a clip from him appearing recently on Fox saying that this case particularly is gonna help lead to a Trump landslide just so you could orient yourself into his sort of get inside his 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 uh, cranium here for a moment let's play the clip story uh first of all laura that that's an incredible argument and i know that's the new pivot is that trump actually gets too beneficial treatment from the courts uh sam bigman free just got sentenced to 25 years in prison his business was way bigger than anything that Trump owned. So uh, I, I don't think there's a too big to fail element here. But look, I think everything going on in New York City, this is the He's big not deal, running for is actually benefiting Trump. Uh, well, he, he might have one day if he hadn't gone to prison for 25 years. Uh, I think he was already contemplating it, by the way. But if you look at uh, Trump right now, he's up five in the latest Fox News poll. He is up in all seven swing states, according to Real Clear Politics. We're not just talking about a Trump win. We're talking about a potential Trump landslide against Biden. And I think it's all because this lawfare is blowing up in the Democrat Party's face. If you ask them all, you got South Florida, you got D.C., you got New York City, you got Atlanta. If you're only going to get one trial complete, I think that's what they're going to get. They're going to get 
bookkeeping fraud that's been elevated from a misdemeanor to a felony based on, and this is me speaking as a lawyer, total BS claim that doesn't actually stand up, I think, on the appeals basis to be able to use another case to elevate from a misdemeanor to a felony. Oh, by the way, while Alvin Bragg is lowering almost every felony in New York to a misdemeanor, he's elevating a bookkeeping uh, misdemeanor to a felony. This is gonna put Trump in the White House, and I think it's gonna put Trump in the White House, so far as this is playing, in a massive win, even bigger than his win in 2016, which well, Rachel Maddow and company still refuse to acknowledge. Some would say it's gonna come down to a few uh, battleground states. All right, so that, that's lawyer, for those that are listening to me and not watching me, Ah, I just found a way to make confetti fly. That lawyer, <laughs> Clay Travis, practiced in the Virgin Islands, who's claimed the fame in the legal profession before he got here and replaced Rush Limbaugh on a radio show and a podcast, was that he went on a pudding strike. Um, he's encouraging this. Now, there's a little bit of a social media war going on now with Clay Travis, with Eric Swalwell, friend of Midas Touch, in which Eric Swalwell called him out very quickly and said, you're asking for people to commit a felony. He said, no, you imbecile. We'll put it up on the screen. No, you imbecile. I'm not asking for a jury tampering uh, or for them to lie. I'm just asking for them, once they're in there, to nullify, to do jury nullification. And that is the same thing by another name. That's just as one commentator said, word salad. That, you know, your request to encourage somebody to actually commit the unlawful act of jury nullification is a version of jury tampering, which is unlawful, both under New York law and under federal law. Look, this is what we're dealing with here. That's why we say, or I say on Legal AF, I don't blow smoke or sunshine. This is what we're up against. Um, that You know, they claim that uh, Donald Trump is innocent. This is the Biden interference election uh, case. Uh, you know, it has nothing to do with Donald Trump. They, they never want to take responsibility or have Donald Trump take responsibility for his bad conduct. Could you imagine if Donald Trump was a schoolboy and was caught for all of these things and in response to the principal trying to give him some sort of discipline, detention, suspension, extra study hall. He came up with it all, all these series of excuses and attempts to delay the punishment. I mean, and blamed other people. You know, you know he's the one that's putting you know little girl's hair into inkwells. He's the one that's setting fires in the corner and yet he blames everybody else. He blames, effectively, he, he insults the intelligence of the American electorate. Let me just call it for what it is, for what it is. He, Donald Trump and his followers and his defenders insult the intelligence of the American electorate. You know, who? it's like the old country song. Who are you gonna believe, me or your lying eyes? And that's what Clav Clay Travis is asking for. Don't believe the evidence, don't believe the facts. Just believe the lies of Donald Trump and vote for jury nullification, a crime. That's what they're down to. They can't win fair and square in a courtroom. The evidence is overwhelming in the four different criminal cases against Donald Trump. The one in New York, I was out there yesterday uh, and um, I was doing, well, actually we'll, we'll roll a clip of me out there yesterday. And I was meeting people out in the besides media there was more me media outnumbered the amount of protesters or counter protesters for trump by about five to one <laughs> but having said that um you know i i had a conversation with somebody that i ran into who's a legal af supporter from philadelphia uh and we were talking about things that they can do in advance of the election like voter registration especially in western pennsylvania and and i and i basically pointed to the courthouse and I said to this person that I met, who's a Legal AF fan, I said, he's getting convicted of this crime. I mean, that comes from 33 years of experience in the New York court systems and in jury trials just like this one. The, the glass ceiling of Donald Trump being convicted has already been broken. He was convicted, his companies were convicted of tax fraud by this very same Manhattan DA in this very same courthouse, the 100 Center Street Criminal Courthouse for Manhattan, um, with uh, 12 other jurors, uh, with the same, one of the two same defense lawyers 
on the other side. The only difference is Donald Trump will have to make a decision whether he's going to testify or not. And we know what happens when he testifies. Really terrible things to him. You know, judgments get increased tenfold when, when he testifies. You know, uh, you know, he, by a lot, he testified in the New York Attorney General case, tried to do his own closing argument. What happened? $465 million judgment against him. He testified in the second E. Jean Carroll case, and the judgment went up with a new a jury from $5 million to $83.5 million. Uh, new Yorkers don't like or trust Donald Trump. He does not, yes, he gets the benefit of being presumed innocent. I'm not, I'm not calling for jury nullification, but I also know my fellow people from Manhattan, the Manhattanites, and they are a hardy bunch who don't really like BS. And they don't, that's why you don't see a lot of people down. I, I mean, literally, I counted them. There were 25 people total who were down there for day one of the trial. No Marjorie Taylor Greene, none of her boyfriend, none of those other people. It was just rows and rows of media trucks. Uh, we'll show a clip of that. And the, um, about, I would say 15 Trumpers three wearing MAGA hats, and then everybody else was just against Donald Trump and calling for his conviction. But I'm convinced, based on the weight of the evidence, the amount of witnesses that will testify against Donald Trump, including people in his inner circle. And I'm not just talking about Michael Cohen. There's plenty of other people who are going to testify. I mean, just to show you how strong of a case the, the uh, Manhattan DA thinks they have against Donald Trump with all of the physical evidence, circumstantial evidence, inferential evidence, audio tapes, and uh, witness testimony. They don't even need Alvin Bragg. I'm sorry, let me try it again. They don't even need Alan Weisselberg. They need Alvin Bragg, he's the prosecutor. They don't need Alan Weisselberg, who's the former chief financial officer, twice convicted felon who's now in Rikers Island, um, who had been the 50 year money man for Donald Trump and was a key witness in terms of the factual chronology in the case. They cut a deal with him to have him just be sentenced to five months, go to Rikers Island and don't testify for the prosecution. That's how strong their case is. They don't need one of the people through which the payoff to Stormy Daniels and the books and records issue passed. That, that's called uh, bravado which I applaud uh, by way of Alvin Bragg. So look, we'll continue to follow it. We're doing, you know, daily shows on on the analysis. I'm doing hourly hot takes on what's going on from my perspective as a practicing New York lawyer and defense lawyer uh, right here uh, on Legal AF. Uh, we do it on Wednesdays and Saturdays, a podcast. We pull it all together. Um, we do four or five other stories along with the Trump trial. Of course, it's taking up a lot of our time um, at the intersection of law and politics at 8 p.m. Eastern time on this YouTube channel. And if you like what I'm doing, go over to Midas Touch's YouTube channel, free subscribe, and then you can get all of my hot takes there under Michael Popak and playlists or contributors. So until my next hot take, <laughs> leave me a comment and a thumbs up. It helps keep me on the air, so to speak. And until my next um, Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting.